What's going on everybody? Jeremiah here from Babylon in My Backyard, a pond and garden channel packed full of informative and how-to videos for you. Today we're going to be talking about aquaponics and specifically we're going to be talking about things that I have ran into that have become a problem for me in the past. So it's more of like a learn from my mistakes aquaponics video. Okay, so when I very first got this place, it already had this pond. Now the pond itself was overgrown heavily with plants. I barely even, actually didn't even know there was fish in the pond until I bought some koi, put them in the pond, and then I was feeding them in one little open spot that there wasn't plants, and all these other fish started coming. Pretty much all of those were goldfish. The amount of plant life that was in the pond really allowed for heavy breeding of goldfish. So I pulled some of that out. I couldn't get all of it out at that time, but I just pulled some out so I had a bigger opening. And I had known about aquaponics and I wanted to try aquaponics. And I, when I bought the house, I specifically wanted to try aquaponics with the pond. The first thing I did was I actually built a little raft and uh, it was too cool outside so I thought I'd do a, a little extra and put a little greenhouse over the top of the raft that sat on the floating raft and I was gonna grow lettuce and such inside of the pond that's just a horrible idea though you see even if the water was warm enough outdoors in the fall in Oregon the roots would have just grown right into the pond and the fish would have eaten that right up so it really just wasn't a very smart idea at all. So I looked into further how I was going to pump water from the pond to that back fence over there where I was going to be running all my aquaponic stuff. The first thing that I had done was I actually built a flood drain bed. I really liked the idea of these flood drain beds. Basically it was the split barrels. I have this design you can see that up in the corner now if you want. And you don't have to use them for flood drain beds. I use these builds for regular garden beds as well. So I set this up over here. I put a pump right into the pond and I pumped into these flood drain beds from the pond. Uh, I had lava rock in there and the way that I connect these f was through the bottom, not directly through the side walls. So I didn't use the expanded clay or hydroton like I've used in some of my newer builds, but I, I used lava rock instead because it was very inexpensive and it worked. It definitely was more difficult to pull plants out once they were dead um, or to work on any of the, the stuff I was working on now here. Additionally, because I was pumping straight from the pond, the bottom end down here got clogged very quickly with all of the gunk from the pond. I still had all the plants in the pond, so I was pumping even dead plant debris up into this flood drain bed. I had lots of issues with my bell siphon. The, this first barrel would drain quickly, but the other barrels were not flowing quick enough into the last barrel with the bell siphon. So it kind of continued to keep running instead of just stopping. I worked it out and I kept messing with it and I got it to work eventually. I just had to have a bigger opening at the bottom of the bell siphon. I realized that pumping straight from the pond wasn't gonna be working anymore. So that's when I started messing with filtration of the solids. At first they did solid separation with garbage can, just uh, creating a sand filter, gravel sand filter. It's very similar to the same concept as I have now with my new filter designs, which you can see up in the corner now if you haven't before. Obviously, I've been through some iterations and I really figured out what worked and that's what the new video is. Additionally, I wanted to add this lettuce raft bed up in that far corner and I was basically going to pump up into this lettuce raft bed and then run down into the different flood drain beds from the lettuce raft bed. I thought it was a good idea to use the gravity from just a little bit of slope that I had up this fence line. Uh, again, quickly, a lot of debris started building in my lettuce raft bed area, so I built a solid separator. Okay, so the solid separator, the idea is good, and it probably could have even worked if I didn't have such a big pump when I was running this. 
I had a 6,000 gallon per hour pump, so maybe too aggressive, but I thought I needed it because I was pumping about eight foot head height up to where this solid separator was. It kind of just raises in the back of the pond over there. But the idea is that the water line comes in from here and I had a tube build, which I don't have anymore, that basically bent up and straight came straight up to about here. The way that I built it was so that the water had to reverse direction. So the water came up into this bell and had to flow back down and then back up again to get out of the drain line over here. It did work okay, but I think my problem was I had so much volume coming in here so quickly that it was agitating the debris down there all the time. So I had a drain line where I could drain out the debris into a bucket and then feed it to plants. Um, but I still had some waste that was building in there getting out of the upper drain line. So it didn't fully remove everything that I wanted to remove that was coming from the pond. The other thing is that the heat was getting so bad. It was like uh, I had problems with temperatures being too cool, too cool and nothing really growing that great. And then it got too warm very quickly and I had issues with bolting. And I've had issues with bolting before in dirt, but never as bad as I did in aquaponics. So it's it's kind of uh, harder to maintain temperatures to control the environment in aquaponics outdoors in Oregon. In my greenhouse in the winter time, I was able to control the environment a lot easier. So now where I did have all of the lettuce raft system set up over here, my planter boxes are still here. This one is a newer one than the barrels, but these barrels are not aquaponics anymore. I'm just using them for dirt gardening. And then the one that was here originally is all torn apart because this spot did not get very much sun. It is right now, but it's only temporary. It was good for lettuces and such, but I wanted to use some of the stuff that was here in the greenhouse. Now in the greenhouse, <clears throat> I've had a lot of problems also. I talked about the heat. Flood drain beds, I've discovered that broccoli and cauliflower do not work great here. If you've had good luck, let me know in the comments below. The celery is doing okay, but it's a slower process for sure. I have dirt celery that I planted after this. It is a little smaller, but really they're probably about equal for the times that they've been in the, the ground or in the, the bed. My cabbage is doing better here. I have planted this cabbage when I planted dirt cabbage and this one is definitely doing better inside than the ones outside. I'll know what I can't do in here and I'll know what I can do as I keep experimenting. As far as the lettuce rafts go, I've had lots of issues with heat in the greenhouse. These things are bolting like crazy and I'm getting spindly heads, just really not great salad heads as the, the temperatures rose outside. So I have added this fan and there's a video in the corner now if you haven't seen that and you want to learn more about it which has definitely helped and then i also have added shade cloth which is coming in a, a future video probably the next video i'm i'm really just taking a lot of time before i post it to know what my temperatures are i've got a wi-fi temperature gauge in here that i keep track of everything and when i do the the video on cooling my greenhouse, it's going to include all of the metrics that I've been collecting. I have another video coming for my vertical grow system, but yeah, I've had issues with this as well. Temperatures for one, uh, some problems with growing tomatoes up here. Tomato roots are intense, as you'll see in that video. So um, I've just a lot of stuff I had to figure out with this and I'm still trying to figure it out. So before I can even post a how to vertical grow video like I wanted to, I have to figure out how to do it really and successfully before I can say, here's how you do it. So I'm going to spend some time on this before I post a video. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up 
subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of great videos coming, so don't miss any of those. And while you're waiting for some of those new videos, come check out some of these other ones. We'll see you in one of those other videos.